You know, Kylo, real good boys know that they have to be good to the planet, which is why we drink Fiji water. Since 2022, Fiji water's 330 milliliter and 500 milliliter bottles have been produced in 100% recycled plastic. That's hot. You know what's even hotter? The aquifer Fiji water originates from is a sustainable source and will continue to replenish as the rain and water cycle persists in the islands of Fiji. No, but really, that is hot. It is. Visit your local retailer to pick up some Fiji water today and give yourself a good boy gold star for helping protect our planet. After all, Fiji water is Earth's finest water. What I loved about it too was the detail around it because humping a couch, okay, fine. Yeah. You hump it, you get over it, you move on with your day. This was like an in what, an inside out like latex glove that was put between the couch cushions. <laughs> Innovation that excites. <laughs> I don't know. Like how is that different than a pocket pussy? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's innovative. Do yeah. we not want an innovative can- candidate? Yeah. Well, this, okay. Well, no. That was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> Good boys. <laughs> Welcome back to Good Boys. Episode five. This is the fifth episode. Great. Our third solo episode. No guests today. Great. No Just guests. Just me and you, Kai. Just Do you me like and you. Kai? I've never asked you. No, because we said on the last one because <laughs> it's K-A-I. No, I don't mind I Kai. I always type it so it's specifically K-Y. Totally. Okay, Kylo. I'm fine with that. Big Mart, Big K. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, so I've just been told that by our producer that Big K means ketamine in the uk which is not very on brand for me to be honest for the u.s listeners kylo saying ketamine (laughs) (laughs) just just in case where did ketamine originate do you think are you quizzing me because it's the uk i don't know Uh, i'm hoping i'm hoping someone's gonna correct me later yeah that's been happening a lot speaking of marty and i have some corrections corner which is essentially where we apologize for all the mistakes that we've made already on this podcast already yeah episode (laughs) five do you want to go first um you go okay my i think i only have one i'm trying to find mine which is a pretty egregious one that makes me feel so old and unfun and out of touch which is that i messed up the gay dating app and i kept calling it scruffies Mm. when there's no such thing as scruffies there is an app called scruff for gay men and i'm sure whoever wants to be on there and then there is a web app which is the one i was referring to called sniffies and so i combined sniffies and scruff and i said scruffies (laughs) which just just goes to show how cool and getting late i am but that is my correction corner okay i want to add to your corrections corner i did what you said Mm -hmm. and i went onto the app store and i searched for scruffies (laughs) yeah (laughs) and it didn't come up but scruff did come up and i downloaded it and it just literally looks like a clone of Mm grinder and i was like okay and then i found snuffies no sniffies sniffies Sniffies, Mm -hmm. which is look lightly explicit Mm -hmm. it's not lightly explicit it's well that's what i was saying it's extremely explicit There's much more than sexual, wait, <laughs> there's much sexual more than intimacy. sexual intimacy yeah. happening on Sniffies. You know what made me think though? There doesn't seem to be a sapphic flinter type equivalent to these like very, mm-hmm. you know, sexually intimate apps. Yeah. You know, I uh, guess the cruising app. Yeah. Like cruising a cruising app. app. Yeah. But then is it because there's no demand? Um, I feel like I'd cruise. I'm like, I don't know. I um, Every sapphic person I know is on Hinge. Yeah, like it's that that's the place for it, mm. but I, but like I don't know, like obviously lesbians and sapphic people are like fucking, so right. there should be. It feels so stereotypical. Yeah, you know what I mean. That we've just created these spaces for predominantly gay men, but not for anybody else. And mm-hmm. I feel like I was thinking that we should we should make one. We should make one. You brought up field. Field isn't sapphic specific. And if I can say something that's so arrogant, I spent a little bit of time on field. I have never seen an attractive person. <laughs> to me, to me, to you, someone who I am attracted to personally right. on field. Interesting. And it's couple, and it was like, you know, couples when I was like trying to date couples and stuff. And right. I'm like, neither of you. Because sometimes it's like, <laughs> oh, the girl's hot and the guy's ugly. Right. Would you do that? Would I hot do that? Girl, hot girl, ugly guy? I have done that. So I guess okay. the answer is yes, because I have done that <laughs> a couple times. But presently, no. Would you? No. Yeah. I've only had one threesome in my life, and it was with a girlfriend and a hot girl. Mm. I think it needs to be girl heavy for me. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's definitely my preference at mm. the time that I was doing this. The only time that I think it's fun is because, like, I, so I've had many 
threesomes sorry to flex on you um (laughs) and it's usually and a lot of them was like when i was dating bi girls who would like want a guy in the room and the only reason it worked for me even though i wasn't wanting to sleep with the guys it worked for me because it always ended up being this thing of like i'm teaching the guy now how to fuck his girl properly right and so like that worked for me yeah that's kind of hot yeah incredibly hot like i wasn't really having to do much with the guy i was i just got to kind of like show him up (laughs) <laughs> yeah. um so th- yeah so that worked for me okay in that way Sounds- and then lex i mean like people are like trying to get get fucked on lex they are oh yeah but i don't know how successful it is for them but there's no photos right yeah not that i'm trying talk- to be vain but like i need i think I- they I'm introduced need- photos but i don't think they could be like you know schlong or <laughs> yeah. or lip you know like i don't think that it can be that yeah um but like people will absolutely for like years now will like write like pillow princess looking for you know right it's very in, in search of i don't want to sound like an absolute wanker but um i'm on raya it's I okay i was too, i was on raya <laughs> too. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. um i'm on raya but that feels well the opposite of your experience to field everyone mm-hmm. seems to be hot mm-hmm. every single person is hot no one really talks to you though no you know you match with someone and then you just i guess look you just look at each other and just consider how hot you both are but no one yeah. says anything yeah i'm assuming it's like me going after like really hot celebrity women and they're like content creator <laughs> <laughs> influencer like, i'm not gonna fuck you <laughs> no i would never put influencer because then they'd look at my page and they'd be like what um but content creator or like comedian or whatever but um there's one specific celebrity woman who i'm not even that attracted to but i she kept first i, I feel like i'm like if it do, it's a, not a match take her out of my feed you know what i mean is it cara so, who cara delavine i would never Fuck swipe cara. right on cara. okay <laughs> so sorry <laughs> but no it's um it, it was okay respect love her but she kept coming up on my feed even though like clearly she wouldn't she's not swiping right is that what you mean yeah but i'm like get but, her but, out of but my feed right. then but, but then it's I'd... raya trying to show you that there's like hot celebrities on there so you'll stay maybe because it's 20 dollars a month yeah but like i would keep liking it and i'm like okay this is cruel at this point <laughs> take her out <laughs> and we can bleep her name constant, so I don't call her out, but... constant reminder that she doesn't want you yeah. Just every day. yeah yeah but i've met a couple people on ryan it was fine but I, what i realized i had it set to only show me women and then it would show me women everywhere and it was mostly la even though i was had been set to new york and then if i tried to look at the map specifically for new york it would give me every gender right that's what's right. up with that user experience yeah it's not great but i think it's because there's i think it's because there's not a bunch of queer people on there i guess you know what i mean yeah so it's trying to just find queer people anywhere yeah they should they should put more queer people on there they should i guess um, okay we got distracted but my corrections corner is that there are many many nudist beaches in the uk mm. <laughs> i said that there was zero yeah apparently there's many quoting my friend becky who texted me after the after the episode and said there is no shortage of nudist beaches in the uk but there is a shortage of people you'd want to see nude oh that's what that's what she said okay I don't kind know. of like field <laughs> <laughs> Ex- exactly yeah, okay got i'm it. now i now want to go on field and see what's going on i'm sure i, I bet you you'll go in there and, cl- and you'll probably you know i'll be proven wrong and whatever but well, i also have a particular ta- like everyone has Hot not, redheads. You know, I don't want <laughs> people out here listening to it who are on field to think that they're ugly. That feels bad. <laughs> that feels bad. It's just yeah. I have a particular taste. Totally. Hot, hot which is, which is when I no? see it when I see it. No. no. Because Brit, I would never put Brit in like, oh, she's my my type. First of all, because she's out of my league. So I would never even <laughs> consider it. <laughs> um, and secondly, because I don't have a physical type. It's a personality type. Oh, okay. Physically, any, any, anything goes. But this is this is contradictory to what you're saying about field well because it's like when i know it i see it got it or sorry <laughs> when i see it <laughs> when you i know say it, you know it. <laughs> yeah it, it's 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 a vibe thing got it yeah i actually do have another correction okay, that go. i forgot because my sister texted me after listening to our episode with rivka jork in it your sister's hot um <laughs> <laughs> and my sister was like and i had been talking about my name change and how i want to keep madi as my last name because none of my siblings are gonna give Madi to their kids and she was she texted me and she goes well first of all she was like listening to the episode and then like 20 minutes later was like I'm not taking my uh, my wife's last name oh shit <laughs> and I was like I just would have assumed but I guess they don't like that the last name that's cool yeah so that's my I that's your correction okay. I think that's I think that's all my corrections 
for the week. Okay. So, how was your week? My week was great. I had a fantastic week. A long week, I'd say. Um, and when I was thinking about how I've been a good boy this week, there's been so many ways. I've just been such an exemplary good boy. The way that I'd love to highlight that I've been a good boy is that I finished week three of my strength training program. Amazing. And you can see biceps on my arms now. No way. Mm -hmm. You can like see it. You can like see like pec definition on my chest now. Like it's not just flat from the top surgery, but it's like muscle is building. That's big. And you can see a little bit of trap, which is something I know to say now um, on my you know shoulders. Yeah. And it feels really good. That's awesome. And I feel strong. That's amazing. Yeah. Very cool. What about you? Um, so it's my birthday week. Yes. My birthday this week. Uh, you're a July Leo. July Leo. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which, which Cancer Leo, you know, cusp. Mm. I hear from the lesbians that that's a good cusp. You do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I was told, I think, on a date. So maybe, maybe not true. Not true? You know, I'm not so qualified. Mm. Cancers are a little scary sometimes. Really? Yeah. And you're not very cancery. I thought cancers were like, like to stay in, really homely. Is that wrong? That's not what I understand them to be. They're so emotional. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Like I have a joke in my stand-up set about how both of my parents have survived cancer. And then the joke is that I am too, which is why I only date Libras now. <laughs> That's how scary cancers are to me. Got it. So I have like a cancer Mars, cancer Venus, which is aggression and love and sex. Like those planets rule those things. And I'm like... What I understand that to be is that I'm so emotional in sex, aggression, and love. Wow. Okay. It's an emotional thing. Oh, my God. Okay. And but I feel like you. I'm quite non-emotional. Yeah. No. Interesting. But you're a Leo through and through. Yeah. Which is like what? Ego? Confidence? Confidence, leadership, charisma, yeah, natural leader. Yeah. So in true Leo fashion, I guess, in my notes of like how I was a good boy this week, I was like, my friend baked me a cake for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> how does that? I want to know how that makes you a good boy. Well, yeah. I just thought it was really beautiful because it's my, he's my best friend. He's a straight dude. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought it was quite a beautiful thing of like a straight dude. He's like a tech bro, you know, mm -hmm. like baked me a cake from Jeff? scratch. This is Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Jeff. Shout out Jeff. Um, baked me a cake from scratch, brought it over. We all ate. It was just so That's really sweet. sweet. So I just had it in my notes. I don't know. I felt very you know loved and cared yeah. for um and then another um thing that made me feel good this week none of these things make me a good boy um but it made me feel good for the first time in my life a waitress like slipped me her number while i was having lunch Ooh. i know were you at lunch with your partner i was at lunch with an advisor okay you know who was a woman and then she was really pissed after she was like that waitress didn't know that we went on a date i was yeah. like they knew. <laughs> I was going to say, she was definitely like watching from like the host stand, the body language and everything. hundred percent. Yeah. And she like slipped it in the, in, in mm. this little like bottle cap. She came over to give us these bottle caps and said, if you drop these in these jars, you can choose which charity we give to for the month. Right. Oh my gosh. And in this little bottle cap was a folded up piece of paper. And I was like, oh my God, what's this? And I opened it and it was her number. And I thought, this is so, this is the nicest thing that has ever happened yeah. to me. Yeah. Are you going to use it? No. Okay. You know, I think I was going to text her. I, I think, what do you think? I was going to text her. I'm not interested in going on a date with her. Okay. Um, but I was going to text her and say, like, thank you so much. That made my day. And, you know, mm -hmm. but do you think that's mean to, to do? Should I just leave it? I don't think it's mean. I think you, there's no way that you could go wrong here. I think when someone gives a number, especially if it's like server customer, I think you're like throwing something into the wind and if someone picks it up, it's fine. But I don't think it's something where like it'd be really like it wouldn't be ghosting of you to not to text not her. It. Yeah. Are you going to like return to this place? Like, is it something that you're yeah, going to want to like Yeah, that's what I thought manage? that I might see her again. So yeah. I should do it. Also, I feel like it's so brave to do. It's so brave. And I want to like validate that bravery. Yeah. You know, made me think, God, I never do. Do you ever do stuff like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> only, a, only a couple times. But like I've been a bartender and server my whole life. And so I have given out my number before. And then I've also gotten a lot of numbers bartending, which I have feelings about. I don't, I'm not a fan of it. Um, even though I love being hit on, it makes me feel so good, whatever. There is something, and I think I didn't really feel this until the past couple of years where it used to be really exciting to me. And now I'm like, you know where I work. Totally. And like, I'm being paid to be nice to you. Like, I guess there's this, like, I guess, I don't know when the shift happened for me, but I'm like, this is my job. I'm, I'm, it, 
I don't really flirt on the job because of just like, I don't know, when you're bartending and it's so busy, whatever. I'm like, so you've perceived this niceness of me be in a customer service role and you've perceived that as me hitting on you or maybe you just think I'm cute and you're just shooting your shot but I'm like it does make me uncomfortable when I'm like if now what do I do with this because you know where I work you potentially know what shifts I'm like when I'm here and like what maybe I don't know maybe I've just had enough bad experiences with people like repeatedly showing up to my job and like mm-hmm. when you're a bartender and someone sits down and like they're by them they like bring a book and they're just drinking a beer at the bar and they're reading a book to like be yeah. there with you but also you're trapped it's like baby reindeer yeah it's exactly you're kind of trapped and so i have i don't think it's like one of those things where it's like a hard and fast rule don't give your number to like bartenders but it's kind of just like don't come and now like show up and have a regular schedule at my bar totally if that also, makes sense it does make sense i also feel like we've sort of missed we've lost this idea of like really reading energies and I know not everybody can but there's mm-hmm. like nuance because sure I'll give you a number to a bartender if they're giving you vibes right yeah. like you can feel that yeah but like maybe don't do it if they're not yeah. but maybe that's hard because you've got to be nice to all customers and you do have to be like that is your job to be nice to all customers I think there's also like opportunities for like there's been times where I'm like hey this was really but so I guess what I'm thinking about is like I worked at a lesbian restaurant like lesbian bar and I was like, like wait there's lesbian restaurants there yeah, yeah. <laughs> well yeah just filled with lesbians mm, it's a colombian restaurant in bushwick no and it's no run way. by a colombian dyke mm-hmm. and she's brilliant it's called maite right on central ave in bushwick and it's really good um and they play like the soccer games on the tv and everything but um i've had the situation where someone gave me their number they were super duper drunk but they were a regular and so like they would come all the time and then like and i didn't awkward. do anything with the number and yeah. now you're in every single and 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 yeah totally i guess it's the same the other way too and i'm gonna go back to this i think i'm gonna text her and just say like thanks so much no yeah. thanks but i appreciate it yeah. and it's brave yeah you know i feel b- i didn't want to squander your good boy about jeff baking you a cake i found a way that it makes you a good boy oh my god go to receive the cake thank you so much Clearly, you have done something in your friendship with Jeff, a cis straight guy, to show him this, like, brotherly love and, like, healthy masculinity that he felt comfortable as your gift. Maybe he got you an additional gift, but, like, to home bake you a cake. Like, there, you had to have done something to nurture that friendship that would make him want to do that gesture for you and i think that's, that's what makes you a good boy i really love that thank you so much you're welcome and i and i like to think i've done that and we have a very special bro yeah you know bromance mm-hmm. for sure yeah shout out jeff shout out jeff thank <laughs> you for the cake it was it was wonderful uh, uh, Britt bought me flowers this week no way beautiful i forget what they're called that's cute for any really, particular reason no i think i think just to be really nice oh. because she loves me <laughs> Cute. Shout out beautiful Brit. orange flowers i forget what they're called but we have we're pretty limited in what flowers we can take home because of the cats so many flowers are oh like that are toxic yeah, to yeah, the cats yeah. um but they're these beautiful and she just showed up home from like being out of the house with a bouquet of flowers for me that is adorable yeah she's definitely done something wrong, <laughs> done something wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're gonna no, find out about it over tried. the next few days yeah okay boys in the news okay Boys in the News, where we read out headlines without reading the article <laughs> and tell them whether they have been good boys or bad boys. Great. Tr- Trump's assassination getting eclipsed by J.D. Vance's couch story. Who's, I don't know. Who's the Just the idea of this. Okay, so basically, on like Google Trends, this is where I got this. On Google Trends, it tells you like interest over time of searched yes, things. Yes, I've seen this. Okay. Oh, okay, and then Trump's But I'm just trying to, to see if who I'm judging is a good boy or a bad boy. I is guess it... we're saying, do we like the fact that um, Vance Couch has been Googled more aggressively mm. than Trump assassination? Mm. And I would say I do like that. Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> That's a good also, boy. Also, like assassination attempt. Let's attempt. be clear. Come on. I mean, still, look, Let's it's super dangerous. Do, do, we shouldn't, I, I don't want to encourage this in any way, please. <laughs> not encouraging we're encouraging assassinations i don't want to no, i told you i told you uk it is we cannot we were not allowed to talk about presidential assassinations in, in america okay sorry we will have the fbi oh my god show you said that door. do we can we bleep this out no we we can say this because we're okay. reading a headline but let's just speak. let's just be <laughs> don't come and arrest me i'm british and i didn't know um <laughs> listen let's talk about uh jd vance and this couch yeah. look apparently i have to say i read a little bit about it and 
this is not true and is like a terrible rumor started by someone but just hilarious, hilarious. that everyone thinks it's true and is googling it over and over yeah. and over again Too i know funny. i'm like i know the page number in hillbilly elegy that they're saying it happens <laughs> on it's page 178 <laughs> i have thoughts though please tell me who of us afab folks did not fucking hump an arm of a cow of their living room couch to buffy the vampire slayer or some other horrible tv show <laughs> in their youth Yes. Have you ever humped a couch? I haven't humped a couch. I've humped a pillow. Okay, so like, and like who I've humped amongst stuff. us? I've humped stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've humped stuff. Yeah, I'm just Also, like, yeah, I'm not judging him necessarily. It's just... Listen, it's I'm just, not, also, I'm not defending JD, by the way. <laughs> not defending JD Vance, but I'm like, on this, we have to be careful what precedent we're setting of shaming fucking couches when the majority of the lesbian community has, has humped that. a couch. We should probably put that in the poll on this podcast have you have, have you, you a couch? have you humped a couch what i loved about it too was the detail around it because humping a couch okay fine yeah you hump it you get over it you move on with your day this was like an in what an inside out like latex glove that was put between the couch cushions <laughs> innovation that excites <laughs> i don't know like how is that different than a pocket pussy <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's innovative. Yeah. Do we not want an innovative kind candidate? Yeah. Well, this, okay. Well, no. That was a joke. Want, that was okay. a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. But I'm not, I'm, <clears throat> I'm just like, I'm not bothered by the couch fucking. I'm bothered by many other things. Of course. It's just so funny that funny. we like, it's hilarious, but I'm like, can we run with something con- concrete and legitimate? Yeah. And, and in the process, not shame couch fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm challenging you because you are so offended by this, and it tells no, me. I just think it's funny it to tells me you've done this multiple, multiple times. I was, you know, an adventurous child. Sure. Also, it's just a stereotype that, like, I don't want to get into murky waters. You're talking about like being a young girl and self pleasure because whatever. But like, that is a fact of life, and you're exploring your body, and you're mm-hmm. gonna hump a couch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next headline. Mark Zuckerberg is in talks to become a part owner of Supreme. This is so you. <laughs> I have zero opinions on this. You have I'm zero opinions? Well, I'm, I will have opinions after you talk. Okay, here's the thing. Bad boy. Oh, I forgot it to vote. Bad boy. But in the sense that, like, bad can be good okay. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Look, Zuck's ridiculous in so many... Did you see that ridiculous fucking interview he did for Bloomberg? No. No, because it's, yeah. Sorry. Um, it's okay. He said, I'm not endorsing any candidate at all, but I have to say that, like, you know, watching Trump almost get shot and then come up with his fist in the air oh, was badass. He said was badass and talked about that for a little bit. And so everyone was like, well, you have just endorsed someone. Yeah. I don't understand why all these tech guys that are supposed to be liberal in some sense are, like, voting for Trump. But anyway, yeah. um, the Supreme thing, I don't know if you've, this is so niche and everyone's going to be like, Kylo, shut up. No one knows anything about this. But Zuck has gone from like, you know, wearing only white t-shirts and jeans and yeah. specific shoes to now like he has a gold chain. His like hair yeah. is growing out. Well, hold on. I, w- I was duped by a Photoshop thing that happened. <laughs> yeah. You saw this? Yeah. And sorry. I turned to Brit and I was like, he's hot. <laughs> and Brit goes, that is literally fake. <laughs> it is fake, but it, but it was it was like over exaggerated yeah, yeah but yeah. ultimately he's changing but his with style facial hair, i was like he kind of looks yeah, good he, yeah he did he did look good yeah um so i feel like this supreme thing is him driving towards this idea of being a little cooler mm-hmm. and i thought that was really funny is he just like trying to like adapt to like black culture like is, oh, is that God. not just what it is i don't know putting on a gold chain and thinking you have swag now <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know i, know. I don't know it's, it's ridiculous. I saw something on Twitter. The Supreme artwork was stolen from a female designer. Wait, I, what? I don't have all the facts and maybe we can get a producer check or, or something. But it was this thread about how Supreme copied that, like the bla- the red background and that type treatment from this like female designer, graphic designer perhaps, and that she did not sue Supreme until Supreme sued somebody else for copying their artwork and in the lawsuit cited like took smart and like credited her and that's when she s- sued but they credited her in it they were kind of like it's too close to the artwork of of x insert this name okay wait producer and she check. was like well now that you're saying the, that your artwork is then is I, mine then i can now sue you. i'm gonna sue you okay wait producer producer clarification barbara kruger barbara, barbara kruger look and you see that you UCLA see it. art professor and very prolific artist you'll recognize her work 
Oh my gosh, yeah. Good for her. I listen, I've never been able to afford Supreme anything, so I'm not yeah. I don't have any horses in this. <laughs> to be race. fair, the, the only Supreme stuff I've ever bought is from Second Street or yeah. you know, like a vintage store. But I like to know this. This is good. Yeah. Next headline. This is a this is a, a throwback to our episode with Rivka last week. So the headline is no, the J D and J D Vance does not stand for Jorkin de penis. <laughs> Jorkin de penis <laughs> is so good. I have not much to say about it other, than, say, other than it does. It does it sound does. for that. Yeah. So you what are a it? good boy. Joseph Dean. You know what? I actually have no idea. Is that bad? I don't think that's bad. And it was posted by my friend with the caption, I stand against misinformation. <laughs> I saw a thing um, on Instagram. Lots of accounts were talking about it. Talking about like his makeup and his cosmetics that, you know, cosmetic injections or surgery or whatever mm -hmm. he has had to his face and they were paralleling it to you know this is gender affirming care mm -hmm. and you're really against gender yeah. affirming care and yeah. you know what do you what do you think about this i understand the rationale of it but i don't love this whole like outing somebody or or, or telling someone that they're that they're doing gender affirming care yeah. you know when yeah. they haven't they haven't opened that door at all yeah can i give you a gentle correction yes those comparisons are for what the hell is his name? Oh my God, not JD? It's not JD Vance. It's okay. the other guy. I'm so glad. Thank you for doing this in person so I didn't get a mad corrections corner in my <laughs> DMs. <laughs> TikTok, guy with crazy eyebrows at the Republic Convention, Matt Gates. Oh, Matt yeah, Gates. Matt, yeah, yeah. yeah. Matt Gates. Yeah. Gates, yeah, right? it's Matt, Matt Gates. Gates. I'm sorry. Yes. How racist of me to... <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you know it was. It was racist. Yeah, sorry. Same question stands though. What yeah. do you think about it? I'm glad that you said this and I have opinions. Great. I, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like these like gotcha moments. I know. Um, I do agree. It is gender affirming care. Do we need like an infographic about how like, cause I think at the end of the day, like body shaming is body. Like, I don't think it's a win for us to like dunk on the guy. Like how about he's awful and he's a predator and he's a right. Republican. He's like a far right extremist. And like, why not all of that instead of like, he's had Botox and, face surgery because then you're you know by the transient property like shaming other people for that i don't know totally. like it's just not my fate it's not my favorite type of like liberal gotcha moment to be like you've had plastic surgery uh you might as well be a drag queen exactly like that's, <laughs> exactly. i don't know that's not my thing i don't I think it's helping i don't think it's helping keep drag performers safe it's the same thing as like i hate it when when liberals are like oh, this guy hates women so much, he must be gay. Like, he must be, like, right. closeted. And I'm like, you're not helping gay people by saying that, like, you must be closeted because you're angry and homophobic. Right. And you're not, and you're going to make this guy more homophobic by calling him gay. Totally. I don't know. So I'm not a fan of it, I, I agree. And it also diminishes the idea of gender and sexuality to these things that we can see. Yeah. Which I've... I, I'm like, that is not helping us either. And it's not what we're saying. Yeah. You don't have to have had any sort of change to your body aesthetics to be anything. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, I don't love it. I'm like, this guy can do whatever he wants with his face. Let's focus on how he's, he's a, a monster. He's a full yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's, okay. no, I'm sorry. glad you brought yeah. that up. Sorry for derailing. I'm sorry for mixing up two white guys. Literally, Never gonna live it down. don't ever let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. Okay, next headline. Why so many Gen Zers and millennials have quote unquote money dysmorphia, even if they are financially better off than they realize? Listen, the person that wrote this article is a bad boy. Yeah. In my opinion. I think we're saying that millennials and Gen Zs feel like they don't have any money when actually they have money. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. They think that they're like, we're catastrophizing it. Right. That feels completely untrue on so many statistical levels. Absolutely. We're poor. We can't afford to buy assets houses i'll never buy a house in my well, life definitely not no definitely not whereas our parents who are writing yeah i assume our parent sort of generation that have written this article yeah. have yeah. are able to do that yeah also like i'm just like who, i'm so transparent about my fine like i'd be happy like let's literally open up my bank account and like 100%. no we don't like i am seventy thousand dollars in student loan debt and i went to a state school and i like got 
graduated cum laude for my four-year degree I went and I got my master's degree and like everyone's like you're guaranteed to make x amount of money and th- right. this amount of thing if you do these things and then I did all those things and look at me seventy thousand dollars in debt and that's low like if I went to a private school I would be like 150 three hundred thousand dollars in debt and then Same. plus you tack on um what is it like? I'm so gonna get this wrong things are like seven times the price meanwhile like mi- salary and minimum rate oh, sure. minimum wage rates that's hard for me to say with my speech impediment have remained the same the price of housing has gone up it's just, it's bullshit fuck these guys it is bullshit i'm also in lots of debt but i have a bit of credit card debt and stuff like that yeah but um and i think i'm in 20k of uk student loan debt damn which like I thought all that shit was free over there it's pre- but it's pretty free. I mean, no, it's not free. When I was, it, it's it's slowly got more expensive each year. So I think mm-hmm. my sister, who's like four years older than me, paid a thousand pounds a year for three years Damn. for university, which is insane. Then when I came four years later, it was three grand. Oh. But then because we didn't, they also give you in the UK, say if you don't have like parents to help you out while you're yeah. at university and it's in a different city, they give you these like very cheap loan grand mm-hmm. things to like live stipends. exactly yeah. so so that's why mine's like 20 because we didn't have any cash so it's like the three years of 3k and then mm-hmm. a bunch of like money to live on and then interest and then interest, interest in the yeah UK? absolutely okay. there's interest and and <laughs> so to be honest, to be no. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have interest no um we do have interest but what's shitty is that i feel like the uk and i'm gonna get this all wrong and my uh friends that are into politics are gonna say shut up but i feel like the uk is driving slowly towards u.s mentality because mm-hmm. the interest on all these things are going up apparently the nhs is like slowly which if people don't know um we have sort of like universal uh medical that is free i mean everything is free in theory you you, you often have to wait it sounds really sexy but you might have to wait like two years to get a surgery that's pretty serious so mm-hmm. there's all you know there's all the problems with it but apparently that's the, the nhs is starting to get privatized and there's mm-hmm. all these things going on so I don't even know that we're any better than, than what's going on in the US. Yeah. Damn. So anyway, this, whoever wrote, we should reach out to the person that wrote this. We, we are all poor, factually, mm-hmm. not in a dysm- dysmorphia or dysphoria. It's saying dysmorphia. And I'm also like, shut Wait, the what? fuck up with this. Tur- <laughs> like, shut up. Stop bringing that into this. Yeah. yeah. Dysmorphia. <laughs> well, I don't, like, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe we should read it. <laughs> I just hate this, like, uh, use, using these buzzwords 100%. to be like... I don't know, to gaslight up. That is what that is, is gaslighting. It's the same shit as like millennial, like Gen Z doesn't want to get up and work. I know. And I'm like, are I mean, you they kidding? Don't. There's just some of the... <laughs> I'm kidding. I agree. I'm half kidding. I'm fa- fine. We can get into it. Listen, every group of people have the bad apples. And I think that I have, yes, worked with Gen Z people who do not want to fucking work. And then all they do is complain about working. Mm-hmm. I get it. I've seen that. I'm happy to go on record and say that that has to exist in every other generation 100 there's just no way someone reminded me of this the other day i was talking to an advisor and they were like everyone's complaining about gen z but i used to complain about millennials in the same way yeah and i think yeah people think just what... don't like the generation below them it's like totally. when you're a senior you don't like the juniors because it's like who are you yeah totally i'm gonna debate with myself probably now but what annoys me i guess is that what I love about Gen Z is the, informa- the the education layer that everyone has around like what they're worth and value mm-hmm. um, because I feel like my generation didn't really have that. Mm-hmm. And so, for example, there was just the, the, the discrepancy and what women and men were paid was super, I think we're still, it's still super mm-hmm. high. But I think there's more education around what you're worth, what you can ask for, what you should ask for, mm-hmm. you know, you know, um, what employers should give you. But mm-hmm. then on the other side of that, it's like people aren't willing, I don't think, to like work super, super hard yeah. and work their way up the ranks in the same way. Mm-hmm. Whereas I feel like when I came out of university, I was like, I don't know anything and I have no experience. So I'm just going to like do an internship for like basically nothing and like work super hard and get it done. Yeah. Whereas I feel I don't hear that a lot as much with Gen Z. They're like, hey, well, what you said, I have mm-hmm. 100K worth yeah. of debt <laughs> yeah. and I need a good job and I need to earn, you know, 75K out of uni. Yeah. So I get it, but it's also, it's a big shift from what I had. And so you're always going to have that like, hey, I worked really hard for a really long time for no money, you know? I'm a Gen Z millennial cusp. And I think that comes out a lot with these things like this. I have an incredible work ethic, but I, but I'm also like anti-established, you know, like in the same uh, sentence basically. And I think that in some instances, it's okay to hustle and 
and work at long hours sometimes and put in that extra effort to get that promotion or to secure that paycheck or whatever do I think you need to be like worked like a dog and like treated like shit all the time absolutely not but I think like this idea that you shouldn't have to hustle or you shouldn't have to like work really hard. put in the time and sometimes work over hours and stuff I'm like that's not abuse right it's, yeah you know what I mean like totally. it's it's sure like abuse exists in workplaces and stuff like that but like I don't know. I think that sometimes Gen Z will put words to something and be like, mm. how horrible is it that I had to like work an hour late? And I'm like, girl, I know. I know that happens sometimes, but I'm caught, you know what? I'm trying to find a balance with these things all the time because obviously I have a company that's not a secret, yeah. but I, I hate a lot of the companies I've worked for, for mm-hmm. all of these reasons. And so yeah. I'm trying to like create a new type of company, but then also we need people to work hard and do it. Otherwise we're not going to be able to get our products out to people and make stuff. And, you know, so it's a balance, I think. But anyway, this isn't a finance podcast, but equity solves this problem, I think, or at least helps solve this problem, Mm. which I know my iPad. Can I Uh, say something to you? Yeah. Some of our listeners might not even know what you mean by saying equity. Yeah, totally. So, so for them, which is my company, we give away tiny pieces of the company to our employees as salary they still get paid a salary but on top of that it's like a little sweetener that over time parts of the company drip out to employees and all companies well no that's not true (laughs) some companies do that and it's really cool um but um i love it because as we're talking about we can't buy houses we don't have asset Mm -hmm. wealth and so this creates i think a bit of intergenerational wealth at least for the small amount of people that work for us yeah um so that if anything ever happens with the company we sell it we get some more money into it, whatever it is, um, then all the employees will get a big payout and that feels like at least we're all working towards the same yeah. stuff. Welcome. This is now trans boy finance. Trend. Well, <laughs> listen, one episode I will have you sit here and like mansplain finance to me because as you do it to me, I think everyone listening will also get it because you just yeah. are good at that and I'm not. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, thanks. Question mark. <laughs> of course, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a compliment. Yeah. I'm not financially, I'm not very financially literate. I'm super financially literate, but it doesn't always translate into, like I said, I have a bunch of credit card debt. I have yeah. shit going on. I think yeah. we all, you know, are the same in that way. But yeah, happy to talk about it. Yeah. Do we have more headlines? We have one more headline. Okay. Here we go. Pete Buttigieg is, <laughs> sorry, Pete Buttigieg's masterclass, Fox News interview takes off online. Mm-hmm. So you, you got to tell me about this because I didn't see it. Yeah. And first of all, I'm going to say, good, oh, sorry. Yeah. Good I mean, boy. I've said this. I like him. Yeah, I've said this before on the on the podcast. I don't like any politicians just like mm. as a general, you know, baseline rule is like they are there to earn my support and not for me to admire them, you know? Makes sense. Because we have been burned so many times. So, yeah. Um, but so this I actually saw. I saw it on TikTok, my number one news source. And, <laughs> you know, it was very interesting. He went on Fox News, which like in and of itself is like, whoa. And he just like showed up with the fucking facts and he spoke very eloquently and he knew what he was doing. And he just like dispelled a bunch of incorrect information about uh, crime rates and like all these Trump like Trump's campaign promises from the last campaign and how he has not fulfilled them, even though the right things that he has Um, and kind of like showing like the actual data of like what's happened under Biden's administration versus Trump's. Um, And I think that doing something like that on Fox News is pretty fucking powerful because of the people, you know, I mean, if you're watching Fox News, who knows how you receive your information anyway. But I think it was a pretty cool thing to do. Pretty good boy thing to do. Did he get annihilated by whoever was interviewing him? Were they being very aggressive? No, No, not at all. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know what I don't get? I was going to say in this country, but actually it could just be a lot of countries. You know, I was like half watching the um, the the debate or no, I wasn't half watching. I watched 45 minutes of it and then was like, I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but the amount of like, why we're not fact checking live? Like why someone yeah. says, I don't, I that we should, that. right? We should do a thing where someone says something and if it's a lie, statistically untrue, mm-hmm. we should have a buzzer that says, no, yeah. no, dude lie yeah but we don't and so then people are listening to it not knowing what's true and what's not and just taking it and then it becomes this like weird you know charm fest where it's just who is loudest and you know yeah well in this case it was like who can put a string of fucking sentences i I guess it's gonna be a little political yeah you know during this election it is gonna be a little bit 
we, we've said nothing about... I mean, I saw a, a, a video of Kamala getting a call from the Obamas. Did mm. you see that? Yeah. Fake fucking phone call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that yeah. phone call didn't happen. Also, everyone... Well, it did, but, like, it it was probably not organically. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, there's this rumor going around that Obama cheated on Michelle no, with Jennifer shut, Aniston. Shut your mouth. <laughs> shut your... And so... I don't want to hear because that. Because in the, in the video, Kamala answers and goes... Um, oh, you're both there together. Everyone's like, see, it's weird that like they're definitely separated because why would she be surprised that they're oh, there together? The and, and I'm like, Jen Aniston. Do you, do you believe that? I don't probably know. In my mind, he's dedicated to Michelle. I, I would hope so. I think so. I would support her lemonade moment <laughs> if, yeah. if she's get, getting cheated on. Holy crap. No way. Also, Jen wouldn't do that. She doesn't feel like a home wrecker like that. The combination of you calling her Jen and We're like friends. saying she wouldn't. We're friends. We're not. No. I, I guess she's she's been home wrecked. She's been home wrecked. That's what I mean. She's yeah. not a home wrecker. Anybody could be a home wrecker. Have you home wrecked? Like, have I taken someone's girl or whatever? Yeah. Never in like only for straight couples. <laughs> So it doesn't count. In my early 20s, I was hooking up with a lot of girls in bar bathrooms while their boyfriends were at the bar. Yeah. Okay. But they never left the boyfriend for me. Right. Ever. So it's not like I never home wrecked, but I was the cheaty. Like I helped people cheat. Is this a universal trans boy experience? I've had, I mean, a lesbian experience. I've had this a bunch. Yeah. From It was, it was definitely, it was like cis lesbian era for me. Yeah. Yeah. It was very like drinking and coke heavy times mm-hmm. for me as well. The boyfriends were like really scary, muscular, like men. And I'm like, I could have gotten my shit rocked. No, because they wouldn't even count it as cheating. This is the, in my era at least, they're like, oh, you can kiss a girl. That's That's true. You know? Yeah. When they should be very worried. They should be worried. They should be very worried. What I was doing in the bathroom. (laughs) Give me an eight, give me an eight ball. (laughs) Okay. Let's talk about content. What media are you consuming right now? We just finished. The Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders docuseries on Netflix. I haven't even heard of this. It is really good and really well done. And I have so many feelings about it. We watched it like over the course of like two to three days. It's a docuseries. So like, are you, how are, how familiar are you here? I mean, I'm very not. Mine's playing it. Dallas Cowboys, like one of the biggest institutions, organizations in America. It is Dallas, Texas. It's their cowboy team. It's their cowboy team. (laughs) their football team i was like not following it's their football team they're called the cowboys and they have these dancers the cheerleaders called the dallas they're america's sweethearts great and um not every nfl team like has a giant cheerleading team but they do and it's the president of the cheerleading team is the daughter of jerry jones the owner of the dallas cowboys and so it's just huge money maker like people love the those girls as much as they do the NFL players Got it. and so they go through this rigorous audition where you have to like they take like 500 girls from like an online submission take them down make them all solo audition and then you go through train training camp oh my God. and it's this intense thing and it reminded me a lot of like sorority life of like when I was in a sorority of like you have to have your hair right this right like a grow a 50 year old woman will woman will say to your face that your eyebrows look fucked and like you'll <laughs> yeah. and like give you an eating disorder it's like so crazy Fuck. um but I kept fighting with myself the whole time watching it because I'm like this is awful this is all these girls want though so in my head I'm like this is borderline abuse but they're the ones experiencing it and they're like this is what part of this is what it takes this is why this is so coveted and why i've worked so hard for it but here's the here's the thing so they go through all this it's during the the football season the head captain who's like a fourth year veteran a fucking nurse during the day so she's like 7 a.m to 4 p.m 4 p.m she's a private nurse for a, a girl with disabilities and then she clocks in and is like the most coveted one a world-class athlete by the way this is not easy stuff that they're doing I love that. they're jumping into splits <laughs> and like, another girl's an orthodontist someone is a financial advisor like an I accountant mean, cool. and so you have these and so there's all this talk about how they're underpaid i think these girls make like 75k and but they have like jobs on top of it it's wild there's like legacy anyway so you they always have like a reality show about the auditions but this is the first time that it's like documentary team that like interviews the girls at they like go back to jersey to like see what their home life is like Mm -hmm. it's really intriguing very cool 
And it made me respect them. Not that I didn't respect them. I didn't know anything about them. But it made me be like, oh, my God. This is, like, real shit. This, like, they're such athletes. They're so strong. But it's toxic. And, of course, it's I, I can't talk about this without saying how white it is. Right. Like, during you're watching the auditions. And, like, there's, to begin with, it's, like, nine. it's nine to one, the right. ratio here. And then, like, they cut four black and brown girls. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. I was going to say, this reminds me of Bring It On. Do you ever watch Bring yeah. It On? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, how it's, like, rivalry of, like, yeah. East, Com- of, like, Compton. No, I mean, it's it's not like that, but it's just, like, there's 36 girls on the team, and maybe four of them are women of color. Yeah. Fuck. It's fucked. I love when people have, like, day jobs and then passions that are, like, real, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. incredible passions. Yeah. And it reminds me of that. Did you watch, um, this isn't a watch, this isn't a movie I've watched recently, but, um, is it called The Worst Girl in the World? Producer oh, Jack? I haven't seen it. You haven't? No, but I have I know people love it. And I know you the should watch it. art of it. You should watch it. It's yeah. it's a really good movie. But there's an amazing actor in there. And I don't know his name, so I'm going to butcher it. So I won't do it. But he um, he's a doctor or a surgeon mm. in the day. And then mm-hmm. just did this like as, a, as a, like a side thing. Yeah. And it was unreal. Anyway, that yeah. just reminded me of that. Well, Britt and I kind of like disagreed on it because she's sitting there and she's like, like, if you're a nurse, like, what are you doing? Like, why do you want to be a cheerleader and subject yourself to this abuse and, and like feeling bad about yourself and this rigorous routine? And I'm like, Britt, like you have a day job and and then you're a brilliant comedian. Like, it's right. the same thing. You're a comic. Like why it's a, it's a passion. It's, it's this, it's an honor. It's a privilege to be a mm-hmm. Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. And that's what they want. They grew up fans of the organization and maybe their mom, whatever, but I'm like, I could say the same to you. Like, you work hard all day. Like, why bother going on stage and telling jokes? I'm like, because it's what you're passionate about. Right, 100%. So, yeah. And we'd be, you know, we, we must mention too, I feel like everyone in this city specifically has more than one gig just because oh, yeah. it, it's needed to live. Exactly, yeah. You know? Okay, so great. So I'll watch that. Netflix? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I saw Twisters. What is that? Uh, Twister from 1996, the year I was born, yeah. is just like a classic, uh, like tornado chasing movie. And so they did like a, I don't know if they're considering it a remake or just like a revival, but it's Twisters and it's with Glenn Powell, who oh. I, I'm really charmed by. Love that. He's a he's a white cis head dude that just I you love like a him. sweet you love a sweet white straight cis head dude. He just like he, I like I've liked everything that he's been in. Wait, hold on. What'd you say that I like? A sweet oh like when they're sweet yeah 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 i just like it's this charm yeah, like thing. the aiden thing the you know yeah like i'm just like a... you remind me of like again wh- what has taught me to be a good boy because like you're well mannered mm-hmm. and you're nice whatever i'm charmed by glenn powell i've liked everything that i've seen him in and it's daisy edgar jones nice british and um it was really good i was like movies are back <laughs> like i saw it in the theaters and it's just like one of those things mm-hmm. where i'm like Oh, there's no political comment. Like, there's no, I don't know. I'm just like, I don't have to worry about anything. But like watching these guys chase tornadoes, there was not, there wasn't even a sex scene. There was one kiss in the entire movie. Okay. I don't know. I'm just like, I, I was able to shut off my brain and just be entertained That's for awesome. two or so hours. And it was really fun. I love that. I, I need to go to the movies. I haven't been yeah. so long. It's like my third weekend in a row going. Damn. I got to be an AMC Stubbs member. You are one? I gotta be. Oh, um, well, gotta now be, yeah, I'm yeah. like at this volume. Um, I didn't watch that much this week because my birthday week and I was out and about, you yeah. know, being birthday boy. But I did see that Todd Phillips released on Instagram another snippet of um, the Joker 2 trailer. Oh. And I'm incredibly excited. Yeah. I couldn't be more excited. When I, if I can be honest, when I first heard that Lady Gaga was going to be in it, I like her, by the way. I think, mm-hmm. like, she's, you know, I think she's dope and I think she stands for good stuff. And um, I read a thing the other day about her um, making her lawyers fire Diddy because they were oh. they were representing him and it's her lawyers. And she was basically like, you can, you fire uh-huh. him or I'm out. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool. That is cool. So I really like her. Um, but um, I don't think that she's the best actress personally oh, come on. you know what i mean born. i struggled with star is born i struggled hard okay <laughs> i know everyone loved it and it's a controversial view yeah but i i really struggled yeah that's fine you know but anyway so when i heard that she was in it i was like oh i don't know because like joaquin's so good and like mm-hmm. you know but the trailer looks unreal yeah and i'm very excited for it mm-hmm. and so let's see maybe she'll surprise me mm-hmm. and she'll be great yeah do you think she's good 
Um, like an actress, yeah. I have no leg to stand on with giving acting notes to anybody. What I do think is really funny is that like this is now her second time. I'm sure she's acted more, but like it was a Star Is Born and now it's this. She did uh, Gu- Gucci. Oh yeah, I didn't watch. Like, that I didn't way. watch either. But... Um, <laughs> I was like, nope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I had she was in it. And oh, and I mean, she was like in the woods in American Horror Story Roanoke, oh, but she was just like yeah. humping things yeah. in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> in like two times speed she keeps doing this thing in interviews where she just like explains acting and everyone keeps really? thinking it's yeah people on twitter are like it's so funny that when she does these so for this one she's talking she's like well obviously like i'm lady gaga right so like i am a singer i'm a performer but I, now i'm playing a character who sings but it's not lady gaga so i had to really figure out how to sing as this character and everyone's like whoa yeah that's acting, acting. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, like that is quite literally what that yeah. is and she did the same thing for press tours for a star is born where she's like i forget what she was saying for that one but it was kind of just that's like hilarious. so like i had to just become this other person and, <laughs> and you're like yeah like, yeah that's the definition that's of acting so that's it so yeah i haven't watched that much but i i i will have a look at the documentary next week but you just mm-hmm. said um what is it called that you said lady gaga was in a Star is Born? No. Uh, oh, American Horror Story? American, do you watch that? I did. Did you watch it with Kim in? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I stopped watching after Apocalypse, I want to say. Okay. It was just getting so bad. Oh, really? I love everybody involved in those shows. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to think of everybody. So if someone's canceled in it, assume that I don't support them. But... Like I love it. The first, I I think Dude, American. You can't you can't assume that they're because they've been canceled. They're a bad person. If they are a bad person, great. Assume that I don't support them. Great. I am using those interchangeably, and so perhaps I should not. Um, if they are rightfully canceled, canceled. Totally. But like, we should talk about cancellation. Um, yeah, we should. American Horror Story Asylum is some of the best, and Mur- Murder House up until like the ending, some of the best television I've ever seen. I've never watched it. It's fantastic. I, I don't watch it because I don't love horror. I'm scared. Yeah. That's the truth. It's scary. And then, and then I can't sleep and it's just like, it's too, it infiltrates my life too much. You know? <sighs> okay. I love horror. Mm-hmm. Asylum is really, fa- why am I blanking on the other? The first three were Murder House, Asylum, and Coven, I want to say, which Stevie Nicks comes in on. But um, Roanoke was awful, which is the one that Lady Gaga's in. Hotel, I could not watch, even though that's everyone's favorite. Anyway, but I stopped watching after a little while because it got bad. Okay. I was wondering if I haven't really watched Kim in it, but I wondered. I heard that there was lots of critics saying that she was really good. Mm. And I was surprised. I'm like, are we saying good for Kim? I think you we know are. what I mean? I think we are. Like, is it's it like good I was so surprised. She was good. Yeah. Vibes. Yeah. 100%. Sure. But no, again, no gay stuff. I don't know. There's not a lot of. I'm saying, that of course, there's a lot of gay stuff happening. There's not a lot of gay stuff happening right now that I'm either interested in or have not watched already. Have you finished Bridgerton? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, like way finished. Oh, yeah. Like when I was talking to you about it in like episode one, I had okay, finished. Right, right. And they just, okay, so this is fun. They just announced that the, so they, each season focuses on a different character and like gives them the full, like the majority of the episodes. And the fourth season will be Benedict's, which is the bisexual guy. Oh, So the fourth amazing. season will focus on the bisexual guy. Love that. And he's, you know, bopping around having three sons and stuff. Bisexual pride. Bisexual pride. People are going to be like, bisexual people don't have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, they do. You they can do. be, I mean, you can have a threesome and not be bisexual. Yeah. Question mark. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's exciting. I was hoping it was going to be Claudia's, um, not me using the actress's name. Um, I, I forget the character's name, but the one that like the one that's like asexual that everyone wants to be a lesbian. But the showrunners are like, hey, just because she's not interested in men doesn't mean she has to be interested in women. Mm. She could just be interested in like herself great, and her pursuits. Totally. And so I think that's cool. Um, I think it's tea time. Oh my God, tea time. I forgot. Yeah. Have you thought about it? Well, I think How that's all you? I think about. Tell me. Well, so I am, sev- I just did my 17th shot, I think is what it is. 17. And you're doing them weekly? Yeah. 17 weeks? I know. Isn't that crazy? Jesus, April 5th, okay. my ex-boyfriend's birthday was the last one. <laughs> was the first one. <laughs> I went to a Mets game with my, my my parents like brought three, like me and my two siblings and our partners to the Mets game. And it was like, bring your kids to the Mets game day. 
um which was really cute my mom was like are you sick and i was like and she was like no that's just your voice so she like recognized that my voice got deeper which was really cool and like my brother who's so hairy was like comparing his body hair with me and like we were just like like do it because i haven't seen them in person in probably like three weeks to a month um and so that was really fun i got to show off my new muscles to them and they were impressed um but yeah i uh i'm 17 weeks nothing hugely different my voice is definitely getting deeper i have since shaved my mustache i was holding on to it i got one singular tiktok comment that was like from a cis dude that was like hey little bro gotta shave that mustache and i was like okay (laughs) (laughs) literally all it takes is one person i'm so bad i'm not a role model in that way um but i shaved it and um how do you feel it feels great. I mean, I listen, it's going to come back. What's really keeps coming back is under my chin. It's so like I shave it every day that and like wild. three hours later it's back. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Um, I feel stronger. I'm feeling myself put on muscle. What else? Um, yeah, a, a little bit of acne, but I think it's, I don't think it's like acne from the tea. I think it's from, I think I have to do a better job, like exfoliating when I shave my face okay um to avoid that and horny just horny every week horny <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm trying do you to feel good this. about that though i, I do like feel good yeah. yeah i think it's not like distracting it's not like ruining your life or anything like that are you like you know dissociating about sex while you're no while you're, oh, no, no absolutely not but it is the same as I said last time where it's like, if I'm home alone, I'm like, all right, let's check out. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm home alone. I finished my work. And what else is I'm like, to do? all right, let's yeah. jerk off. But no, other than that. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. What about you? I, so as I keep saying over and over again, it's my birthday, but we went to um, like an outdoor bar space and had a few of my friends around and I wore like a really tight tank and a pair of shorts and I felt like for the first time, and I like caught myself in the mirror, like in the window mirror. And I was like, for the first time, I feel like my muscles are coming in. Mm-hmm. My chest feels really good. And I felt like really good mm-hmm. and affirmed, you know? Yeah. Which was really amazing. But I think that I love what you said about your workout, getting your chest. It's really, by the way, I found it really hard to build my chest muscle after mm-hmm. top surgery. It was like almost like concaved. In. Yeah. Um, I don't, but I, my so, right side still is. Con- it's still really is. only my left, but they say I'll get there. And I didn't realize that they were coming in. Like my chest was coming in so much. Mm-hmm. But then having a really tight shirt on and seeing that. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, this is really cool. But you know what I didn't realize? And maybe this is something to do with the surgery. But I thought that I used to work on my chest when I had breasts. Mm-hmm. And so I thought I was building muscle under there. But then mm-hmm. they did the top surgery and then everything feels like it's just been completely removed Mm. but it shouldn't be anything to do with the muscle right the muscle should be underneath they leave a little bit of yeah please don't make me get into i don't know what (laughs) please don't i was shocked by it because i was like you know what i mean because (laughs) (laughs) but yes i know what you mean you know and i was like it's completely concaved it looks like i've never worked on my chest in my life maybe someone could maybe someone smart uh, a doctor or someone can answer this for us i don't know i'm sure some of that muscle went with the tissue but also could have just been from like sitting on your ass for two weeks at, when you were recovering oh, and totally. that could have just gone away a little bit or it just looks different. I don't know. And and I'm talking to my doctor about upping my tea mm-hmm. um, because I'm only on four. I don't know if I've ever said this to anyone because I didn't know it, but I've only, I'm only on four milligrams. Okay. She's like uh, with the gel. Okay. Um, And that's because, and we can get into this maybe next episode, but that's because I'm trying to freeze my eggs. Yeah. And I have to do that first. So I'm doing that in like September, October, and then I'll start like upping my testosterone a little bit. Mm-hmm. So we should maybe talk about fertility at some point. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I also did that. Perfect cervix, by the way. <laughs> Not to brag. <laughs> I was like, surely I have to have something wrong. And he was like, it looks great. How did you feel? Did they do that thing where they like clamp open your body? And I wasn't so clamped oh, God. like it I am at the gyno me... sometimes. That's what I'm saying. But he gyno. just lubed up a an a internal ultrasound wand. Got it. He just lubed that up and I am very dysphoric, but I have a lot of bottom dysphoria. Yeah. And so it's just the worst, it's my worst moment going to the gyno and doing all these yeah. things. Do you have that on him? No, surprisingly not. Cause I'm still like down for penetration. Nice. <laughs> but <laughs> I, 
I, I mean, I don't know if this is gross to hear, but this is just a reality of like being trans and going to the doctor. I was on my period and I'm sitting doing the consult with him. Right. And he was like, well, if you want right now, like part of this consultation, we can do an ultrasound. We'll just check to see if there's anything going on with your cervix. And then we'll also do the blood to get your fertility count and see where you, you are. Right. And so I was like, okay, but, and I, and he was so funny. He was so affirming. He like knew, he was like not just calling it testosterone, but he was like, oh, cause you're on T and you won't want to go back off T like trying Very to cool. explain it. Like he knew what he was talking about. And so I'm sitting there and I was like, um, I'm on my, I'm on my, my period right now. So I don't think we should do the ultrasound. And he was like, are you kidding me? Like I, I do ultrasounds on people menstruating all the time. And I was like, oh, but I have a tampon in. And he was like, we have tampons. Like, it was kind of just like, what are you so And I'm like, okay, but you're going to like enter me when I'm, oh my and he did. And I didn't, that was the only thing that was dysphoric because then I like got up from the exam and there's like a little, cause like I, I bleed, got you it. know? Got and it. so, and that was the only thing that was like dysphoric, but I was, I, I thought I had probably so many things wrong with my cervix. I was like, there's probably a cyst or two right. or like something. And he was like, they look great. And then my egg count is normal. Oh, so that's good. so cool. Well, nor- average, I should say. And you're say. still bleeding heavily even on the tea? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> Maybe not as bad, but, and it's like a different kind of blood. I don't know how to describe it. Interesting. But yeah. God, because I was hoping that would go away. My doctor said it just depends. Sometimes it just like goes away for people. Sometimes it gets worse before it goes away. I don't know okay. that there's like an exact science to it. Well, tea time. Tea time. Sounds like it's going well. I'm sorry? It sounds like it's going well. It's going very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel great. I feel energetic and horny too, but maybe not as much as you. I guess I wish I was feeling a little bit more energy that everyone keeps talking about that you feel on, on tea. Mm. I'm not, not bouncing funny. out of bed in the morning and I'm not like running down the street. I don't know. Like that's what everyone <laughs> says. I have I have to be patient, but like I don't feel any uptick in energy levels. Really? Yeah. Interesting. At all. It's wild. It's yeah. funny because you feel so horny. I w- in my mind, those two things sort of come together, mm-hmm. you know? I, I rarely feel really lazy and really horny at the same time. I often am feeling really energetic and really horny. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say that it's lazy. It's just like, it's this like base, le- like I'm a pretty yeah. active oh, person. I like, wasn't it- calling you lazy. I got to say that. No, that's okay. <laughs> but it's like I mean, more relaxed, like mental you know? horniness and it's a different kind of horniness. Like mm. now I want to watch porn and I okay. never wanted to watch porn before. Oh my God. So I'm like, I'm quite literally a 13 year old boy. You have to tell me this because I know you'll know the answer to this. Someone told me yesterday that they watch. I the answer to this. I feel like you're going to know. They watch porn on Twitter. Oh, X. Oh, okay. Is that it? And I had no idea that that was a thing. Um. Yeah. I mean, you you can get away with posting some pretty explicit stuff on, on Twitter for sure. But, but people that's are not like posting there. It, like, it, I mean. Yeah. That's well, wild. because you like post a teaser and then you have like your OnlyFans in the bio. So it's kind yeah. of like you like this. Come see the full video Got there it. because because it's it's allowed on there. Right. Um, without it fucking with like your community guidelines or whatever. But mm. I'm scrolling through my feed and I see lip. That's wild. Yeah. I had no idea. I'll be on the subway. Totally. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm right. like, fuck. Once again, not saying you shouldn't be allowed to post that, but I, w- I should like probably a find a way to filter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And sometimes it will be like explicit content. Do you want to see this? And you have to click yes. But it's not always the case. Damn. Yeah. I'm just shocked. I didn't realize because obviously Instagram, you, you show a bit of nip and it yeah. has a meltdown. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm on a, a, a porn site and I'm like the one where the w- girl enjoys it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what i'm like looking for search search results zero yeah i'm like female orgasm <laughs> <laughs> all right okay that's it good boy kylo good boy mati thanks so much thank you, thank you.